and we are the spiritual seed of Abraham through the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, so it says, your seed shall possess the gates of the enemy. The prophet says, God has been testing the patriarch because he had given him a promise. And when God makes a promise, he wants to be sure that this person is worthy of the promise before he fulfills what he has promised. When he gives you the promise, you must be worthy of that promise. So he took time testing Abraham to see whether he was worthy of the promise. But Abraham against hope, he believed in hope. He did not consider the deadness of Sarah's home. That's how he became the father of many nations. The father in issues of faith when there was no hope he believed in hope you no know, you don't look at your surrounding you look at the promise of God so he, he called the things that are not as though they were then his faith had created power what he could not see he saw it by the eyes of faith we realize that in the bible when they were the barren people. I think you would notice here in the Bible a family story that, that was following the family of Abraham. Uh, when you are the father Terah, uh, the father of Abraham Terah, uh, at the first born when he was 70. That first born was not Abraham anyway. Then Abraham at the first born also when he was an old man. Um, then when uh, uh, Isaac, Isaac, first born around, he waited for about 60 years. The same problem. He was in the family of Jacob. But their faith prevailed against what was following them. God had deposited something in the seed of Abraham that against all odds they will prevail. And if you see the devil suppressing something, that something is very important. The devil fights and blocks something. It's not a general thing, it's an important thing. You see, all the barren mothers in, in the Bible, they, they did not give birth to just general children, but it was a high rank of the children. Meaning, even in your life, when the devil suppresses something, he's afraid of that something. <laughs> now, they, they promise that I'll make rivers flow in barren heights. And the Bible says, There shall be no barren in Israel, and nothing shall cast the young. So those promises, Abraham held to that uh, spiritually before it was written, because it was written later in Exodus. He knew he was defying that barrenness, believing the promise of God. Because God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Yes, he said, shall he not do it? If God does he says something, he is going to make sure it happens. He would rather bankrupt heaven than any of his promises to fail. And he's more willing to give you what he, he promised than you are willing to receive it. Since all tonight we, we may be we not may not be rich in wealthy goods, but we possess all things. The church itself possesses all things. Yet poor yet rich possesses all things so we possess everything as the church of god we are possessors of all things everything is ours they say we are a bunch a crazy bunch but yet after all it belongs to us or everything belongs to us you know every carrying a thousand years is ours all silver and gold is ours that's the reason we act the way we are doing we are heirs of all things i was thinking we possess love joy courage faith, long suffering, gentleness we possess everything so there's no reason to be said because we are possessors 
we possess the Zoe life. We possess every redemptive blessing. We possess salvation. We possess divine healing. And every promise in the Bible is ours. Every chapter, every verse, and every line. We possess the revealed word. The, the Holy Ghost is ours. Joy, peace, and all things belong to a Christian. So there is no way you can live an underprivileged life when everything has been paid for you at Calvary and you have omnipotence such everything that you desire, all things are possible to them that believe. You have creative power that when you speak the word, it's like deity speaking. You have, you have the gene of God, you have overcoming power. You have the quickening power. We have all the powers of heaven as the ambassadors of the throne, the powers of the world to come. There you stand this morning. Uh, there stands the church of the living God. I don't care what anyone says, what the doctor says, what anything, uh, what the unbeliever says. We are more than a match. A believer is more than a match to any circumstance. We are the seed of Abraham and we shall possess the gate of the enemy. No matter what the enemy is, whether the enemy is witchcraft or satanism, we possess the gates of the enemy. Whether the enemy is sickness or unbelief, we possess the gate of the enemy. Whether the enemy is anything, cancer, HIV, we possess the gates of the enemy. No matter what the enemy is, God gave the promise that we are heirs, we are possessors. Meaning, healing is yours. Salvation is yours. The Holy Ghost is yours. That's why Christ says, upon this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against They will try. They will try to fight. But the devil is wasting time. Because you are fighting from victory to victory. And nothing shall by any means harm you. The gates of hell can wrestle, can fight, but they cannot prevail against you. Uh, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. It shows the gates of hell will be against the church, but it cannot prevail, for the church of the living God shall move on. The church of the, or the great church of God, it shall move on. All things are tough in your life. You shall move on. Though all hell assail you, you shall move on. Though he attacks your marriage, you shall move on. Even if you have nothing to eat, even if you have no job, you shall move on from height to height until the crowd of God is revealed in your life. Before we go very far, let's see the gates, spiritual gates in the Bible. We know that New Jerusalem has 12 gates, the gates of Pearl. And the names of the 12 apostles are written on the gates. And the names of the 12 patriarchs are also written. So there are 12 gates, three on each side of that city, four square. And the old Jerusalem also at the 12 gates. I want to show you the gates in heaven and the gates in Jerusalem and the 12 gates in your life. So when Nehemiah was rebuilding, repairing the walls, he repaired the ship gate. In chapter 3, all these gates are in chapter 3 there. And the fish gates, and the old gate, and the valley gate, and the town gate, and the fountain gate, and the water gate, and the horse gate, and the east gate, and the, this other gate, the Mifka gate, yes. So he repaired the ten gates, meaning that out of the twelve gates, two gates are missing. They were going to pick them soon. So in the map of Israel, 
These were the caves, the fountain cave, the water cave, the valley cave, the fish cave, and all of them have a spiritual significance in the life of a believer. We can talk about the fish, the, the ship gate first. Um, the Elisha, the high priest, Rose, and the brothers, the priest, they rebuild the ship gate. The ship gate. Remember the account of the pool of Bethesda them? It says there was a, a pool a, with five pouches by the ship gate. The angel of the Lord used to come and steer the waters by the ship gate there. So we are going to soon say what they mean. The fish gate, this is what is in the picture. They, they used to come. The fishermen would bring their fish uh, through the fish gate there. Um, the old gate, the old gate was repaired also in verse 6 of chapter 3. The valley gate was repaired by um, in Verse 18. The town gate uh, was repaired in verse 14. The fountain gate was repaired in verse 15. The water gate was repaired in verse 26. Uh, you have heard many people say there is a gate in Israel that is called the eye of a needle. Uh, many people have propagated that story that a, a, a camel could not fit in that gate uh, and, unless it offloads its luggage. They, they were spiritually saying that a Christian cannot pass through the narrow gate without offloading their luggage in things of the world. But that gate was not originally a gate in Israel, uh, in the walls of Israel, but it was a Russian temple in Israel. That is the, that gate uh, they call the eye of a needle. So Christ was, uh, it was not existence in the time of Christ. Christ really literally meant that it is impossible. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Some people explain it as he meant the gate called the eye of a needle. But at that time, that gate was not there. He says it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Then he says, but with God, all things are possible. Uh, what camels cannot do, God can do it. So let's look at the gates again. Let's look at the 12 of them now. There was the ship gate, the fish gate, the old gate, the valley gate, the dam gate, the fountain gate, the water gate, the horse gate, the east gate, the inspection gate, the Ephraim gate, and the prison gate. These were the gates in Israel. Now, the ship gate represents the finished work at Calvary. When he cleanses you and you become sheep in his fold. The fish, girl, the fish gate, you become fishers of men after salvation. They used to bring the fish through that gate. So we are saying, bring them in. We are fishers of men. When you are born again, go and win other people and bring them through the gates. I will enter his gates with faith in my heart. And I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. The old gate represents the old nature That's, that must be remo removed. The valley gate, uh, sometimes you are in the valley, but the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he will make them. And that's where you get greater opportunities in Christianity, in that valley, in that testing, because more precious than gold is the child of your faith. If you read even in the time of Isaac, he found the wells in the valley. Now the dung gate represents the well, 
the works of the flesh that must be eliminated. If you read in the Bible, Old Testament, you realize it is through this dung gate where they were getting the rubbish to, to the value of Himon. Uh, uh, that's what the, the word key, Hinom. Meaning the value of Hinom. And now we call it Gehenna. But it was Kihinom, the value of Hinom, where they were burning rubbish. Uh, so it, we then derived that those who are the vessels of dishonor go to Gehenna because the fire of that place was perpetually burning. That's why there was demonology also there because the sons uh, they were burning, passing the sons in the fire of Molech there. So that gate was a terrible gate. Uh, but Paul says, I count all my, my gains as dark. All his education, all his riches gain. He says, Because I know Christ now. The fountain gate represents the work of the Holy Spirit. A fountain is opened in the house of David. The water gate, the word of God, out of his belly shall flow living waters. The, the horse gate represents the believer's warfare. So, at any time in a Christian life, all those gates are active, but there are some gates that must be shut, which are not needed in a Christian purified life. Yes, there must be war. You must be fighting demons. So the horse gate must be active. Now the eastern gate. I will meet you in the morning, right inside the eastern gate, over there. Be ready, faithful pilgrim. Less for you, it be too late. Now the east gate, if you go to the modern Israel, you can't find it. It was plastered. You see its outlines. But it is closed and sealed shut. It was shut by Muslims. Because they did they believe that Christ will come through the eastern gate. So they wanted to block the entrance of Christ. Now there are some gates that the devil blocks in your life because he knows that you'll be dangerous when those gates are opened. The gates of prayer must always be open. The gates of reading the Bible must always be open. The gates of your prosperity also must be open. That's why you open the life gates. That all may go in. Open ye everlasting gates. Now, this Mishkat gate speaks of self examination. That's the judgment seat. Now, a Christian must not neck the elements of self introspection. So now those are the gates in Israel. We have talked about the 12 gates in heaven. Soon we want to look at the 12 gates in your life. Now Samson lifted the gates of Gaza. When they shut him in trying to defeat him, he was the seed of Abraham. So he possessed the gates, he uprooted those gates and went on top of a mountain and left them there so that they are evidence that no one can bring them down. You know, God can cause a testimony that cannot be reversed, that will remain as evidence in your entire life. Now, even when they would give a testimony like the days of Boaz, a, a public testimony was made before Israel at the gates and Boaz kicked off his shoes to show that he has firmly redeemed Naomi and in redeeming Naomi he got root as the bride and Jesus redeemed Israel and brought the Gentile bride he made a public testimony he was lifted between between heavens and earth as an ensign right outside the gates of Jerusalem.
Jerusalem. So we, the heaven's gates are through accepting Christ as the sacrifice for your sin as the propitiation. Now a Christian must know the gates that the devil uses to penetrate your life. So then you block those gates. And you must know the channels and gates that the Holy Ghost uses to come into your life. And you unblock those channels. So today we have an assignment to block some gates and open some gates. You examine a gate and see what comes through that gate. Then you say, I don't want this gate to block it so that the devil has no access into your life. Then you examine the channels and the mystic channels of communication with God. Now Ezekiel was taken by the locks of the head by the pillar of fire and he went to the temple he started discovering the gates and doors of unclean spirits in the house of god he started digging and exploring and discovering evil spiritual gates now if you want to diagnose why things are happening bad in your life you must know which gates they are coming through if you see spirits tormenting you you must know which gates they are using i always say that instead of spending too much money on red kill you must know how the rates come in and then you shut those things you must know how evil spirits penetrate your life and you block those gates today we are standing with a mission of blocking the devil forever and welcoming the Holy Spirit forever so he went to the door of the outer court and looked and behold there was a wall and he started digging and he exposed the spiritual door and there were abominations happening behind that door every creeping thing and abominable beast you must understand there are spiritual gates and spiritual doors that you must close in your life so it says they stood even the ancients of the house of Israel they, they are among them there was Jazariah and Shaphan and the thick incense was going to going, they were worshipping Tammuz there were women uh, who turned their they are begs to the altar and they were worshipping Tammuz so uh, Ezekiel started digging and exposing the gates of the enemy and when the enemy is exposed he has no power in the church of the living God this morning lays the power to heal all sickness when we say all we mean all in the church lays the power to overcome all temptation in the possession of the church of the living God this morning lays the power to throw all sin away and receive the Holy Ghost right next to you you have that power to throw out all sin and receive the Holy Ghost in the church of Jesus Christ whatever you desire ask in my name it shall be given unto you a little while the world sees me no more but you shall see me because I'll be with you even you to the end of the world the royal seat the works that I do shall you do also verily myself I'll be with you these signs shall follow them that believe his seed shall possess the gates of the enemy no matter what the gate is now listen to this no matter what the gate is you shall possess that gate no matter what the problem is it's under your power and your jurisdiction as a child of God his seed shall possess the gate of his enemy if it is sickness if it is temptation of sin 
whatever the gate is it is conquered as long as you are seat of Abraham don't complain about what is happening use the power in you to possess the gates on the day of Pentecost he sent down the Holy Ghost to continue through the Gentiles to take out the seat of the promise to give the Gentiles the offcast to give them the baptism of the Holy Spirit to bring them into the promise now we have a right to conquer all sicknesses all sicknesses must be dealt with today we don't have to conquer it it's already conquered we just have to claim the promise and go and take it it's already conquered death is conquered hell is conquered sickness is conquered temptation is conquered all devils are conquered hell is conquered death is conquered the grave is conquered we stand in the gate and take it you don't have even to fire a shot it is finished it's already done it is conquered and you are more than conquerors the enemy we possess the gate of the enemy how many gates are you going to possess this morning thousands or millions we possess the gates of the enemy every enemy Christ rose from the dead we possess it because he gave it to us it is all a free gift beside everything has been done and conquered every gate now I want the sick people to understand that he conquered sickness he took that gate the only thing we have to do is to walk to that gate and say in the name of Jesus give away Satan everything has been conquered we are just echoing the victory and today the church of the living God has the privilege of and seeing the conquering resurrected Jesus Christ the son of the living God standing present living in his church doing the same thing he did we possess the gate of the enemy I want the devil to hear it I want the demons to hear it that we are here to possess the gates of the enemy the gates of diseases the gates of frustrations and worries and poverty the gates of friendly spirits we are here to pull down the strongholds if if you have got if you have got an enemy this morning then my brother if you are seed of Abraham after hearing this there is not enough devils that can keep that gate before you if the devil has closed the gate and you have been praying and you can't get through the mighty conqueror is here you just say the name of Jesus the break I'm passing through we are passing through all the blocked walls we are passing through we are a mighty army we have the shield of faith God's church is moving on if there are those those with their hands up saying Lord and the sinner save me those that are backsliding let them know that they they don't have to remain a backslider you don't have to remain sick you don't have to remain a sinner you don't have to remain in poverty you don't have to remain a backslider you can possess the gate of the backslider maybe that one that one of temper also the gate of vitality vulgar tongue the gate of the lustful heart or greed of a man 
big things. You must know you can possess the gate of the enemy. Maybe it's sickness, afflictions, possess that gate. Everyone must stand and face their gate by the authority of the word of God and move that gate and say, Who art thou, O mountain? Before Zerubbabel. Because everything has been paid for us. We are more than conquerors. We already possess all the gates of the enemy. It has been given to us. The master key is in our hands. With the master key, you can open and lock any door, any gate of the enemy. You just take the key in the name of Jesus Christ and an open or open any gate that the enemy is you bound from any promise now, now the enemy knows that the mind is the gate is the womb of the spirit so he tries to make you have a carnal mind you'll be trying to block the channels of communication of the Holy Spirit in your life but now we are unclocking we are rejecting a defiled mind we are rejecting carnality we are rejecting reprobate minds we are rejecting double mindedness but let the mind which was in Christ be in you a right mental attitude a pure mind a mind with the revelation of the word of God so we reject all pride and restlessness and darkness and desires of the flesh and we accept the channels of the Holy Spirit because the battlefield is in your mind the prophet says uh, uh, you can, a bird can fly over your head you cannot avoid that but if you allow it to make a nest over your head and roost there and lay it there something wrong with you temptations can come in your life but don't allow them to lay eggs don't allow the devil to lay thoughts of defeat and rejection don't allow those spirits to hate in your life uh, the bible says if you resist the devil he will flee from you and I believe demons are fleeing now that realization that you are a son of Abraham that realization that you are a daughter of Abraham is enough for you to stand and rejoice now let's look at the spiritual gates in our lives the five outer gates into this body are the senses of this body the, the other five gates to make them ten are the senses of the spirit then you will find that in every believer the gate of doubt has been blocked so you are operating with eleven gates also it was, it was blocked by the Holy Spirit but to the unbeliever they are operating with 11 gates also because the gate of faith has been blocked by the devil in the life of an unbeliever so there are gates that are blocked depending on which spirit wants to do what when the devil wants to operate he closes the gates of righteousness when God wants to operate he closes the gates of evil that's why the people of this evil age the, their conscience is seared in blood so otherwise there are 12 gates two are in the soul which is doubt or faith but 
they cannot operate at the same time one is blocked so what is the 12 gate in heaven and the 12 gate in Israel and the 12 gate in your life now as a believer when it's necessary sometimes you block the gate of hearing if it is wrong if you are hearing wrong things you block those things but if you are hearing things of God faith comes by hearing so if there is any sense that is blocking you from accessing the super sense you block that gate that's why when we pray we close the gate of our eyes and immediately the heavenly gates open and in plain view we see our master now the devil can use these gates uh, he can use your feelings of your, your, to affect the spirit you start reasoning against the world or, or he brings memory of the world and then he tries to affect the soul inside but you close all the channels of wickedness you block all the lusts of the flesh and let the word the engrafted word of God have preeminence in the innermost being that's why if you we are built in the stature of a perfect man. A faith, virtue, um, is a temperance and a patience, a brotherly kindness, godliness, and the, the capstone of the Holy Spirit. So, the seven virtues, the faith, virtue, knowledge, a patience, temperance, uh, godliness, brotherly kindness, uh, those virtues, like the seven looks on Samson. As long as Samson had the seven looks and seven virtues, he could possess the gates of the enemy. You overcome the devil when you have all these virtues faith, virtue, knowledge, patience. Uh, temperance godliness uh, you are in the stature of a perfect man and then the love of God keeps and there's preeminence in your life and you become a great masterpiece a, a chip from the old block a billboard for Christ a representation of the kingdom of God on earth. Now, there are gates that you should reject in your life. A thing immense filter. Now, notice, he has opened his mind, uh, filtered through the word of God. God's filter. You won't look, look upon Jezebel. You won't think she's pretty. You would think she's Jezebel. You would think uh, behind those red lips is poisonous things. That will sting him. The Bible says her gates are the gates of hell. So, laughable demons, they are the gates of hell. In another quotation, the prophet says, dirty programs of the TV are the very pits of hell. Television is the very pits of hell. Uh, now listen to this quotation. We are going to use it to fight. We are going to write on it to dispossess the devil and to claim every inch of ground uh, there is an inspirational quotation that is so explosive against the devil one time I was his property I know we are all one time bound in sin one time this little woman was his property but not now
not, not now because something is happening now he came to lose the grip Christ came to lose the grip the hell had a grip on our life sin had a grip upon our lives he, he, he lost the grip of sin and of Satan upon my life oh what a joy sin has no grip death has no grip anymore upon my life and upon your life and now you are not his you must know as a son of Abraham as a daughter of Abraham that you are not the devil's property you have often heard me say in prayer take your hands off God's property have faith to claim your own that's, that's your rise now I'm saying to the devils now take your hands off God's property this church was bought with the blood of Christ your life was bought with the blood of Christ and I'm addressing devils that take your hands off I'm addressing HIV take your hands off unclean spirits they are not your property yes at one time you were under the kingdom of darkness but not now not now now you stand to refuse I'm a child of the king his royal blood is in my veins now you are an overcomer you overcome all forces of hell you overcome all evil thoughts you overcome all satanism you overcome all family spirits you overcome all hedonism you, you pull down the strongholds he possess every gate I want to refuse today the devil must take off his hands from your finances he must take off his hands from your marriage he must take off his hands from your prayer life because when Christ ascended on high he led captivity captive that's why we torment all tormentors and accuse the accuser we want to devour the devourer now in Revelation chapter 12 there appeared a wonder in heaven there was a great red dragon who still through a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth and this red dragon started um, there appeared another wonder a woman clothed with the sun and the moon was under her feet she was traveling with pays ready to be delivered with a man child and then the dragon stood before this woman before this feeble woman but they overcame him that means this woman is a seed of Abraham overcame the devil by the the blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony now no matter what stands and opposes you you shall prevail if you are a daughter of Abraham Haman's plan could not prevail the devil did not prevail Made in heaven the devil's assignment in your life cannot prevail the spirits of hell cannot prevail until even Haman's wife confirmed that and said if Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews before whom you begin to fall you shall not prevail against him the demons are now telling one another that we cannot prevail against the children of God Penina could not prevail against Hannah so anti-marriage demons cannot prevail against your marriage even a boiling oil could not prevail against John 
he preached in the midst of that potent prevail. It means if you are a seed of Abraham, you are invincible. There is no shipwreck that can destroy your life. He says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. All dark ones could not prevail. The devil can no matter how he tries, he cannot prevail against the life of a believer. Because when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of God raises a standard. Watch what is taking place now. The church is rising, brother. The power of God, the tide is high. Moving on. We are going from depth to depth from deeper depths and higher heights. The old-fashioned apostolic Pentecostal power of God that once dwelt on the disciples is coming back to the disciples again. So what you have heard, what you have read about in the Bible, that power is here. But whatever the enemy would try, the, the deception white was right that could not prevail. Nothing can ride through the church and prevail. The red horse rider could not prevail. The black horse rider could not prevail. The pen was right Now, if you watch the gates of Israel, uh, you find that every gate that they have, most of their gates, uh, the walls have a lot of bullet marks. Meaning that there are walls around those gates. But though there are bullet marks, inside the gates is the nation of Israel. But you are given power. Though there is a mama on the highway, you are told that you can buy that mama. You can do the right of price. But with your words, you can address any situation. You can buy that poison. The devil's poison can penetrate your life. Now, but by your intellectual strength, So the demonic influence of this evil in last And even in the last day, when the lion is the enemy, 
God kept his promise. He possessed the of the enemy. God stood an angel there before the ladders. Peace 
no man to be open. So we are shutting the door of the death. We are shutting the mouth of HIV. We are possessing the gates of the enemy. In Revelation chapter 22, a mighty angel with a great chain.
gates are never going to be seen. 